Can you really drive cross country in a Tesla? Is it practical? Is the technology even ready or are just Teslas for early adopters? Well, I put it to the test in my Tesla Model Y. You see, recently I completed a 3,200 mile, 11 day, eight state road trip starting from Iowa down to Oklahoma, over to New Mexico and back home to Iowa. It was a great experience and I learned a lot. And I wanna share with you what I learned. Now, if you own a Tesla and are thinking about road tripping, or you're considering the purchase of a Tesla, this video is for you. When road tripping in a Tesla, I plan to answer a number of questions. How much does it cost? Does it compare to a gas car? Can you road trip in a Tesla as fast as a gas car? Does autopilot really work and how does it help with road trips? Do any of the full self-driving features help on a road trip? Is it worth the 10 grand? Well, hopefully I'm going to answer these questions. I'm Jim, the Iowa Tesla guy, and let's get into it. Now, before we dive into the numbers, let's go over some groundwork for the trip. On this trip, we drove just under 3,200 miles. We took 11 days and covered eight states. The timing of the trip was in March of this year, so it wasn't the warmest time of the year. Average temperature for the trip was 48 degrees Fahrenheit, or about nine degrees Celsius. My car is an early model 2021 long range all wheel drive Model Y, and I'm running the 19 inch Gemini wheels, and I'm using factory tires and wheel covers. Now, most of the trip, was with three adults, and the last part we had four adults in the car. On top of people, we also had about 200 pounds of stuff in the car for the trip. And I had the tire pressure set at about 42 PSI, and my car does not have a luggage rack or a tow hitch. So how much did it cost me to complete this trip? Well, cost kind of depends on what method of charge you use. And for this trip, we use almost exclusively the Tesla supercharger network. Now, according to Tesla's website, they have over 20,000 superchargers worldwide. The US is pretty well covered, but in the middle of the country, your choices for travel may be limited based on the network. Now I'm confident that you can get almost anywhere in the US, but your choice of route may be set based on what supercharger is available. So let's take a look at the numbers for this trip. We stopped at a total of 27 superchargers. Now you can pause the video if you want to see the details here. But in total, the cost of the trip was $195.16. Now it's worth noting that on rare occasions, you'll find free superchargers. And we found one in Amarillo, Texas, which was cool. I also need to mention that I did charge a couple of times on 110 volts at a house that we stayed in in New Mexico. Now the total amount charged at 110 was fairly minimal and I really didn't keep track of it so I can't share the details here. Here you can see how my car fared from an efficiency point of view. Over the 3,200 miles we consumed 1,075 kilowatts of energy. My watt hours per mile average was 327 for the entire trip and I actually was hoping it would have been better but it wasn't. Overall efficiency for the trip was about 72%. Wind and weather was a big problem in the plain states. But the car performed its best up in the mountains. It actually did really, really well. It's fair to ask what this trip would have cost me if I was in a gas car. Well, according to the Tesla app I used, if I was in a gas car, I would have needed 113 gallons of gas for this trip. That would have cost me about 250 bucks. So subtracting the supercharger cost, you'll see a savings of about $54, which is about 22%. Now, when I crunched these numbers, I was hoping this would have been better. So what's actually going on? First thing you need to know is that supercharging is much more expensive compared to home, at least in Iowa, which is where I do almost all my charging. On this trip, superchargers cost between 22 and 27 cents per kilowatt, with one exception being the free charger in Amarillo, Texas. Now for me, charging at home costs around 13 cents per kilowatt. And another thing to consider is that right now gas prices are relatively low. The Tesla app estimated that the cost per gas 
for this trip was about $2.20 per gallon. Now you could also improve your cost savings with Tesla by finding hotels that offer free charging. Now we didn't take advantage of any of this on our trip, but we did do a small amount of 110 volt charging when we were in Santa Fe. Now given all of this for me, this trip did cost less money in a Tesla compared to an average gas car. Now the next thing that we need to talk about is travel time. Is it slower to travel in an EV compared to a gas car? Well, let's take a look. A better route planner estimated that I would be driving for 41 hours and charging for six and a half hours on this trip. The Tesla app showed that we actually drove for 46.4 hours. This is because I didn't keep track of the short back and forth trips in Colorado and New Mexico that I didn't plug into the original route. But overall, I would say that it was kind of difficult to know exactly how much time we spent charging because the car doesn't really keep track of that. You have to calculate this manually. So I really didn't know. So I did keep track of it better on the end of the trip. So let's take a look at the last leg from North Platte, Nebraska to Marion, Iowa. Now, according to Google Maps, you can drive from North Platte to Marion, Iowa in seven hours and 42 minutes at a total trip distance of about 530 miles. Now, Google does not factor in stops of any kind. And, you know, they happen in a gas car. They don't factor in gas, food, restroom stops, nothing. So it's kind of, you know, not exactly accurate. When plugging in the same route in the A Better Route Planner app, you can see that it thinks that we need to drive eight and a half hours with one hour and 19 minutes of charging. The mileage is about the same, and I used an average watt hour per mile that was similar to my overall trip. So overall, if you look at these two things, it's telling me that this trip will take 10 hours total and compared to the Google map, this is two hours and 20 minutes longer than a non-stop gas car that never stops, which we know that it does. So here are the stops for the last leg. On the left, you can see what the app says we will be doing for charging. On the right, you can see what we actually did. It predicted 79 minutes of charging and I actually used 116 minutes to charge. Now, why is that? I want you to pay attention to these areas where we started charging. Now, let's dig into this a little bit. One reason why we charge longer is because of the charging curve. Now, what is the charging curve? Well, every EV will charge fast at a different rate depending on the current state of charge. Teslas are no different. Now, this is the charging curve for a Tesla, at least as best as I could find. And the lines show that maximum charge rates for a given state of charge on the battery are at the very front end or the front half of the battery. Now, generally, a good rule of thumb is that it takes about the same time to go from 20% to 80% as it does to go from 80% to 100%. Now overall, the key to fast road tripping is running on the lower half of the battery as much as possible. So let's go back and look at these tables. You can see that the predicted state of charge at each location was 10%. You can see that I never actually hit that on the low end on any of my stops. And this is the main reason why my charge times, I think, were longer. Simply put, we didn't do that great of job in managing the low end of the battery during this trip. Another thing that will greatly impact how fast you can charge is if you precondition your battery. Now, what is preconditioning? Now, in order for your battery to accept the optimal charge speed, it needs to be at the right temperature. And I personally don't know what that is, but the car knows. So if you go to charge when your battery isn't at the right temperature, the car just simply will not charge at an optimal rate. And I did this in Colorado. I made a rookie mistake. I went from the hotel to a 250 kilowatt supercharger and it was less than one mile away and the rate of charge was terrible. It was because my battery was cold. Uh, it isn't because of anything else. Now to get around this problem, you need to do one of two things. Now if you're going right from a hotel to a supercharger like I did, go into the Tesla app and enable the climate controls for about 15 to 20 minutes ahead of time. Now, if there is a little battery icon in the top left of your app, you'll know that the battery is preconditioning. Doing that ahead of time will really help you out. Now, when you're traveling, it's always best to enter in your next supercharger as your destination. 
Now, sometime between 15 minutes and 60 minutes before you're going to arrive at your supercharger, your car will start preconditioning the battery all by itself. You'll get an indicator at the top of the screen uh, in the nav bar above where you're navigating. Now, doing both of these things will ensure that you are getting the fastest charge rates that you possibly can at your next stop. Now, for us, the total trip time was 10.5 hours for the last leg of the trip. And it was clear that we were not running on the lower half of the battery. Weather was also bad and the efficiency was also unpredictable. So for those reasons, we wanted to give ourselves more of a cushion and we paid for that in slower charge times. I should also say that we stopped in Lincoln, Nebraska for a little bit longer than normal because we ate lunch. Now overall, it's safe to say that EVs are slower than gas, but there's more to the story in my opinion. And before making any final conclusions, we need to talk about autopilot and full self-driving to a lesser degree. Now, autopilot is Tesla's technology for taking over some of the driving functions of the car. At its core, autopilot has two parts. First is traffic aware cruise control. Now, it will match your speed with the traffic around you. Second, it will auto steer to keep you in your lane. And this works really well when there are well-marked lines on the road. And to a certain degree, it will steer around sweeping turns in the road, but it will not make hard left or hard right turns for you yet. If you pay for the upgrade like I did, you can get what's called Tesla's full self-driving package. Now, in my opinion, the name is misleading because the car does not drive itself fully yet. Now, there's a promise of that in the future, but today it's not there. Now, Today, what you get with full self-driving is the following. You get what's called Navigate on Autopilot, which handles the on and off ramps as well as suggests lane changes. You also get Auto Lane Change, and it can do this all by itself or if you just press the stock on the turn signal. And there are other features like Auto Park, Summon, Smart Summon, and Traffic you know, Light Detection with full self-driving um, that you get with the package but that really doesn't help you much, in my opinion, in road tripping. Overall, Autopilot was a huge benefit for this trip. I used Autopilot for more than 95% of the driving. And with Autopilot, you manage the car. You let the car manage the road. And what this means is that you arrive at your destination much more refreshed than you would in a normal gas car. You don't really realize just how much normal micro adjustments and steering wear on you over time, especially during road tripping. Also, having the car change lanes automatically with the press of the turn signal is really nice. I did end up turning off having the car automatically change lanes for me, and I cover the reasons why I did that in another video. So I guess the $10,000 question is, is full self-driving worth the money? Well, when it comes to road tripping, it's a nice feature but probably not worth the money, at least not yet. Yes, EVs can be slower on road trips compared to gas cars, but it really depends on your driving style. Now, if you are the type of person that only stops for gas, eats in the car, keeps bathroom breaks to an absolute bare minimum while you're filling up your car, and then you hit the road, then you're gonna need to adjust your expectations when traveling in an EV. And I have to admit that to a certain degree, I was that person. Now in a gas car, we're always talking about where we need to stop, where are we going to eat? Now in Tesla, you don't have a choice of where you're gonna stop. You're gonna stop at wherever it tells you. So for me and our family, we actually found this to be a little liberating as opposed to limiting. Now I'm convinced that even though the trip took longer, I was much more refreshed when I got to my destination because of autopilot and full self-driving. You can easily travel longer in a Tesla. Ultimately, I asked the question, does that extra time even really matter? And I would say probably for most of the time, for most people, it really doesn't. So that's my final word on this trip. It was an awesome trip. I learned a lot and we had a lot of fun in the process. I would strongly recommend that you consider a Tesla as your next vehicle if you have any interest at all in electric vehicles. I'm assuming you do because otherwise you probably wouldn't be watching this video right now. So if you decide to jump on the Tesla bandwagon, make sure you use a referral code to get those 1,000 free supercharger miles with your next purchase. And if you want to use mine, 
that would be great. And you can find that in the link below. Finally, if you found this video helpful and interesting, please do me a favor and click that subscribe button. Subscribing is free and it really helps the channel. Now, 90% of my viewers are not subscribed. So it would be great if you just hit that button real quick. Until next time, happy driving.